Harvey Specter is the ultimate high power TV lawyer. Manly, good looking, rich, fearless and powerful. And of course well dressed. So let's take a look at Harvey's dress code in detail. And just as interesting is the style journey of his young protege Mike Ross. From stoner bike messenger to associate lawyer. Let's take a look at the messages their different suits send and why each of them has made the right choice for their age and position. And towards the end I'll throw in who I think is the best dressed in the show and it's not either of these gentlemen. And no, it's not Lewis. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits. And I'd like to thank all my viewer for bringing the TV show Suits to my attention. Hard to believe I didn't know about a TV show called Suits. It's a bit like the Pope not knowing about a TV show called Catholics. So I binge watched the first three seasons just for this video. It's the kind of guy I am. So let's take a look at Harvey's signature style and some premium business suits. Harvey's typical suit is a two button three piece suit made from a finely woven wool. The fabric has a rich texture, always making it a cut above. The shoulders are a structured Savile Row style, which is a padded stiff shoulder. They have a tapered waist, which helps to visually build up the shoulders and produces a manly silhouette. He always chooses a peak lapel, which in most countries signifies formality, strength and seniority. Perfect for a high-flying lawyer. But of course you must have some of those qualities to pull this look off. His vest is a traditional V-shaped low-cut vest, allowing for the necktie to be seen clearly, which mostly has a horizontal stripe pattern. He is also very fond of striped shirts and even occasionally a Windsor collar. The jackets all have flap pockets, including a ticket pocket. That is a small pocket on the right hand side above the hip pocket, which was created originally for carrying theater tickets. A double vent is standard and the reason is the flap at the back of your jacket covers your behind, which is considered gentlemanly. The single vent was created by Huntsman of Savile Row for sport. When riding a horse, it allows the jacket to split while you are sitting upon the horse and again cover your behind. Wearing such a jacket for daily wear is completely defeating the purpose as you flash those behind you with the seat of your pants. And speaking of pants, Harveys are flat, no pleats or cuffs at the bottom, which is considered more formal and businesslike. No denying that despite being an American, his suits are the epitome of the British Savile Row suit, serious and manly. The first time we see Harvey reminds me of the introduction to Bond in the first movie Dr. No. Our protagonist is sitting at the gambling table, calmly and suavely holding his own. Harvey is wearing a charcoal grey, meaning a very dark grey, pinstripe three-piece suit and going for a serious monochrome look with a grey stripy shirt and black and silver necktie. His watch strap is also black leather, an important detail not to get wrong if you are going monochrome. Pulling off three stripes in one outfit is a difficult achievement, especially as the shirt and suit stripes are the same scale, which is usually a no-no. But the rules are actually just guides, and of course can be broken, especially when you know what you're doing. And in this case, it just works. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. It'll bring this video to the attention of other menswear enthusiasts. Thank you. Harvey's next suit is dark gray, not quite as dark as charcoal gray. It's a worsted wool with an almost rough texture, giving it visual interest without being distracting. You want people to notice your suit, but not concentrate on it. You always want them to be looking at your face while talking to you. And again, Harvey has pulled it off, wearing two sets of stripes next to each other with a pair ease. Not as simple as it looks. The standard advice is to wear patterns of different scales so they don't clash. And that is good advice, but the stripes on Harvey's shirt and necktie are very similar in scale, and yet it still works. The trick here is that the shirt and necktie are the same color scheme, with one being darker than the other. This monochrome approach with subtle stripes on the shirt helps them blend together and not clash. So let's take a quick sidestep from Harvey's well-practiced style and take a look at the other main character of Suits, Mike Ross, with a very different life path and wardrobe. Originally a very casual dresser, Mike has to don a suit for a favor to his best friend. It's a cheap suit and the fabric does not drape well. It does not hang nicely. The shirt is a button down, which though no crime does not look good in this case, and the necktie is undone. A good look at the end of a long day, but not if you start off like that. But most of all we can see how uncomfortable he is in the suit. No suit is going to look well if you are not comfortable. So make sure you get the fit right when buying a suit, and wear it often, even if it is just at home watching TV to get used to it and shake off that I just bought it look. You might be tempted to keep it looking as brand new as possible, but a worn in suit that you are comfortable in is the key to looking confident and stylish. The difference between the two men's suits is as striking as Harvey's jawline. Harvey is wearing a subtle pinstripe navy two-piece with a blue and brown striped shirt. The necktie is very interesting. It seems quite plain at first, which is always a nice touch. 
Quality fabrics for business often use this technique to bring interest but not flamboyance to the suit. They will look quite plain from a distance but reveal their detail close up. The tie actually has a complex pattern in brown and blue echoing the colour schemes of the suit and the shirt. The whole ensemble is a masterful use of understated colours and patterns. It's not outstanding in any one way, but it is memorable. Mike's next suit is not any better than his last. Another cheap fabric that doesn't hang well, another button-down shirt, this time denim, a cheap belt, and the lapels are still too narrow. Harvey's reaction sums it up perfectly. Didn't I tell you to get some better suits? I spent $500. For how many suits? Five. Harvey, by contrast, is back to a three-piece suit, navy pinstripe, and a Windsor collar shirt. That is a shirt with a different color collar to the rest of the shirt, usually white, and has a very nice paisley tie on instead of his preferred stripes. So I'm really enjoying the small growing community we have here on For the Love of Suits. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll keep the videos coming. Mike's first good suit is quite a step up, but I think he is still making a rookie mistake. My advice is never make your first suit a black one. It's too limiting and I go into great detail on the merits and drawbacks of the black suit in this video on Sugar, starring Cobble Farrell. Another grey suit for Harvey. You really can't have too many grey suits. But look at that silhouette. No one can deny the manly shape of the classic suit. And as if I need to convince you, take a quick look at Harvey relaxing at home in a t-shirt and tell me he doesn't come across as a far less serious man to deal with. There's a noticeable swathe running vertically through this fabric, giving his suit an opulent feel. Harvey is wearing a blue Windsor shirt with, of course, a white collar and a nice burgundy necktie with a blue pattern running through it. The blue helps the necktie work with the blue shirt. While Harvey does tend to stick to classic business fabrics that suit his character, every now and then he breaks out an interesting look, but nothing too unsuitable for a lawyer. Here Harvey has an unusual tone-on-tone -tone dark blue Glencheck two-piece. The check on this suit is quite spread out and loose in appearance, giving the pattern room to breathe so it doesn't seem too busy but remains interesting. He has matched it with a white shirt and pocket square and added a blue square grid necktie. A very interesting suit without going over the top. This brown suit, while still not perfect, is an improvement over the black suit Mike wore earlier. It matches his colouring and his position in work and life. It's youthful enough while still making sure he is taken seriously. The white shirt might be better being replaced with a blue one and the necktie is still a bit narrow but works quite well. Harvey Specter has a very impressive wardrobe, and I don't just mean his suits and shirts. His necktie collection is excellent as well, which is great because neckties are coming back into fashion after a long absence. I really appreciate neckties, even though I don't wear them that often myself. His neckwear is tied in a variety of knots, but I'd like to point out the double Windsor here. It's a complicated knot tied in two parts with a left and right knot, and then unified with a further fold over the top. There are some excellent how-to videos on YouTube showing you how to tie it but notice here how Harvey's spread collar allows enough room for the double Windsor. It's a wide knot and takes up some room. There are different types of knots suitable for different collars, and Harvey is the master of the dimple. That groove in the middle of the tie just under the knot. It's essential to master creating a dimple. Never wear a tie without one. There are also many videos on YouTube showing you how to achieve this. It can be tricky if your tie is too narrow, which is why Mike's ties don't impress so much. As admirable as Harvey's suits are, I also like the wardrobe of Daniel Hardman, though definitely not his personality. With their notch lapels and slightly more casual yet mature fabrics, they are a bit more wearable for me than Harvey's. Harvey speaks to his position of power and seniority and uncompromising personality. And I'm definitely inspired to make my next suit a Harvey style suit for any of those tricky negotiations with clients. But for the average daily wear, Daniel's wardrobe has a lot of inspiration too. But I believe the best dressed award has to go to Jessica Pearson, played by Gina Torres. She possibly has the best wardrobe I have ever seen on any female character. Amazing fabrics and suits. So I apologise for not covering her in detail. I might in another video later, but as I've said before, I don't know enough about women's clothing, particularly the fit, to feel confident reviewing her outfits. But she wears one fantastic outfit after another throughout the show. But of course it doesn't hurt if you're a tall, beautiful woman. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And I'm saying goodbye to Shanghai after 20 years, and I hope to see you in my next video, Shot from Dublin.